Welcome to the book of Shmuel Aleph, chapter 14, Perak Yudalid, where we left off. There's this huge war. On the one hand, you have 30,000 Plishti chariots and countless people. On the other hand, you have Bnei Israel with just two swords. Sounds like a joke. Two swords. Uh, one for Shaul, one end for Yonatan. So who wins this war? So what happens is... Yonatan goes in the middle of the night. He doesn't even tell his father. His father is sitting under a pomegranate tree at the edge of the hill. And Yonatan and his Na'ar, the guy that's carrying all his stuff, go and infiltrate towards the Plishti camp. In the meantime, everyone's camping with Shaul, Achia ben Achituv, the brother of Ikavod, the Ark of Hashem. Everything is there. And Yonatan and his assistant cross over, it's called Shen Hasela, they cross over this huge sharp rock between these two huge stone pillars, and they come close to the Plishtim's, uh, they come close to the Plishtim's camp. They're like, maybe Hashem is going to do a miracle for us. And the guy's like, yeah, why not? If you think that that can happen, then go for it. And so Yonatan says, here's the deal. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to come close to the Plishtim's camp in the middle of the night. Now, surely they have a guard. If the guard is like, stop, I'm coming to you then we run away because this is not going to be good. But if the guard of the Plishtim's camp is like, come over here, come over, who are you? Come over. In that case, we go and we fight all the way. So they are like, okay, great. Sounds like a good decision. Uh, then what happens is the um, Shaul, sorry, Yonatan and the young man that's with him come closer and the Plishti guard sees them and he's like, come over here, you guys, come over here. They come and Yonatan is like, you know what? God is with us. This is a sign from Hashem. We got to win. And Yonatan takes his sword and he starts pummeling and killing the Plishtim that he finds. He kills 20 people in his first shot. Uh, and uh, the Plishtim hear the sound and the chaos. And it's the middle of the night and it's dark and nobody knows what's going on. And they start running away. They start running and running and running away. That is what they happen. That, that is what happened. Meanwhile, in the camp of Bnei Israel, Shaul wakes up and he's like, wait, so much chaos. Sounds like the Plishti camp is under attack and it looks like they're running away. Who's not here? They look around and lo and behold, Yonatan is not there. So Shaul is like, he speaks to Achiyah, the Kohen, and he's like, bring me the Ark of Hashem. But by the time they're starting to look for the Ark of Hashem, they realize the Plishti are running so fast. So Shaul is like, forget about that. He's like, everybody charge, start chasing the Plishti since they're running away. And so the uh, Shaul and all of Bnei Israel start chasing the Plishtim and the Plishtim start killing each other because it's dark and they think that the Jews are all over the place. So the Plishtim actually start killing each other and then Bnei Israel are able to come and in the middle of all this chaos, they start chasing and hitting on all the Plishtim, all the Jews that were hiding in caves that went to the other side of the Jordan. All these people, everyone starts chasing the escaping Plishti army. Now, as they're succeeding and, and everything's gr going great, uh, the Bnei Israel decided they want to do something to show their gratitude to Hashem, their faith in Hashem, to keep this a spiritual experience. And they say, you know what? Why don't we make a promise, since we're all going to fight now, that nobody eats anything? So they make a curse. They say, anybody in our camp has to uh, fast now that we're going to war, even though I wouldn't recommend going to war while fasting. Uh, they're like, yeah, the cursed is the person who does not, uh, who, who eats um, any, any food now. Now the people come into the forest to chase and there's honey. I don't know if this is actually bee honey or some other kind of sweet uh, uh, plant that was there. But the point is, Yonatan did not hear when they declared that no Jew in the Jewish army is going to be eating now. So he takes a stick and he scoops up some honey and he's like, ah, this is great energy boost, great energy drink. And he continues uh, the, 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 the combat. And someone turns to him and he's like, wait, your father just made us all swear that we're not going to eat. And here you are dishing out some uh, uh, honey. What's going on with this? Your father said um, you, nobody should eat. And Yonatan is like, that's ridiculous. Look how, how much stronger... I am since uh, since I ate honey. And honestly, Yonatan says, if no one was fasting here, then actually we would have been much more successful at clobbering the Plishtim and hitting them very hard. Anyhow, Bnei Israel start getting more and more hungry and that doesn't lead to anything good. They take sheep, they take cat cattle, 
and they do not keep the laws of Kashrut properly because everyone's so hungry. You ever see a Kiddush and Shul after a fast or something where everyone's so starving, they just dash to the food? So what happens is, is the Bnei Yisrael are so hungry that by the time the fast ends, quote unquote, they go to the animals, they shech them, but what do you have to do when you shech an animal to eat the meat? You have to either salt it so that the blood comes out or you have to roast it. But the people were so hungry that they just ate raw meat still while the blood is in there. And Shaul is like, what are you guys doing? What have you, what do you, why aren't you doing the shechita properly, the kashering properly? Shaul builds a mizbeach. He's like, listen guys, we have to do this in the kosher way. And after they eat a good dinner, Shaul is like, why don't we go in the middle of the night and start also clobbering the Egypt, the, not the Egyptians, sorry, the Plishtim, and they're like, uh, uh, Shaul asks Hashem, should we, uh, should we go and attack the Plishtim? But Hashem ghosts them, and he doesn't answer. Uh, and uh, and he's, well, Shaul is like, wait, why is Hashem angry at us? Why do we not get an answer? And he's like, did anybody here eat? Even though we made an oath that no one's going to eat during the day. And he, they're like, yeah, your son, Yonatan, ate. Remember, you made an oath that whoever is the one to eat during this day is going to be killed. Well, guess what? Your son, Yonatan, is going to uh, is going to uh, die based on what you said. So they do this raffle. They find out who is the one that ate. It turns out to be Yonatan. And it turns out to be Yonatan. And Shaul says, Yonatan, what have you done? After they do this whole raffle and they find out who it was. And Yonatan is like, I took my stick and I scooped up on you because without that I would have died. And Shaul is like, you know what? In that case, you have to die because this is an oath we made. And all the people are like, no way, no way. We're not killing Yonatan. He's the one who saved us. He's the one who led this victory against the Plishtim. And we will not let him die. So the Bnei Israel go back home. Everyone settles down. Shaul becomes a much stronger king. And he starts fighting Moab and Ammon and all the enemies of Bnei Israel. And he's very successful. He also beats many of Amalek. And he has two daughters. He has a son, Yonatan. Shaul has a son, Yonatan. But he also has two daughters. One, the older one is named Merav. And the younger one is named Michal. And the wife of Shaul's name is Achinoam. And the chief of staff, the a chief of staff is Avner ben Ner, his first cousin. And Kish, the father of Shaul, and Ner, the father of Ner, are all the sons of Aviel. Basically, the Jewish people succeed. The monarchy is strong. The Plishtim are being crushed. That is the end of Parak Yudalad. So what did we have here in Parak Yudalad? We had a situation that starts off desperate. 30,000 chariots of the Plishtim and countless soldiers of the police team, but Bnei Israel only have two swords. Yonatan goes sneaking out at night, not even telling his father, co- crosses the big rock, comes close to the camp of the police team. As he comes close to the camp of police team, he tells his lad that's with him, he says, if the police team guard says, uh, get out of here or I'm coming to you, then we're toast. We, we, don't, we don't come close. We leave. But if he's like, come here, identify yourself, then we come all in. And indeed, that's what happened. The Plishti guard calls them. They go in. They fight with their sword. And the Plishtim hear so much chaos and mayhem that they think that they're being attacked on all sides. The Plishtim start killing one another. Bnei Israel from afar, Shaul is like, who's missing Yonatan? They realize Yonatan went and did this. They see chaos and escaping among the Plishtim. So Bnei Israel join in clobber the Plishtim while the Plishtim are escaping. Shaul makes a vow that anyone who eats anything that day from his army is going to be killed. Yonatan doesn't hear it, so he scoops up honey and eats the honey. Then afterwards, the Bnei Israel start eating the meat without it being properly kashered. Shaul gathers that Hashem is angry at them. He tells, he says, he makes a lottery to find out who it was. Turns out it was Yonatan who ate. He says, okay, you'll have to die because that's the oath I made. And Bnei Israel are like, no way, you can't kill Yonatan. He's the one who really helped lead this victory. That is Parak Thank you for listening.